morning everyone so uh, let's see introduction of excelatex so as you all know so my primary branch is amipet and uh, we have second branch as dilsunar recently we opened two new branches in kphp as well okay so let's go and see what is brief introduction about excelatex and then we will go ahead from there so what we do in general so we deliver expertise training from almost 7 years so we are purely dedicated to data analytics, which means you know that Power BI, Tableau, ClickView, those kind of stuff. Initially, we'll start with Excel, then we'll go to database SQL, then we will go with VBA. Likewise, we will we are specifically dedicated to data analytics. So we are other as a testing center for Microsoft certifications as well. So we have certifications for Excel, Word, PowerPoint for all the Microsoft products. So there should be an ISO standard for these institutes and we are ISO certified and we are the album pro excellence winners for these years. So who we are, the trainers. So we are a group of certified professionals and we are working professionals as well. So in general, we teach what we do. So our ambition is whenever you think of any course related to data analytics, you should be getting our name first. So we always help you to improve career, why? Because we always teach what we do. So what are the things we provide to you? So customized training content, customized training content in the sense based on the audience. So if it is already working professionals who are good with VBA, we will do expert VBA course. If it is a basic level things, they don't know about VBA and all, so we will start from the scratch. So based on the audience, we will customize the training content as well. So classroom and virtual training, <coughs> So previously, most of the things it is both, but uh, once the pandemic started, we started going virtual. Nowadays, we started the classroom as well, but uh, VBA is going virtual. So we'll be sharing tips in social media. We have a YouTube page where we'll be showing some tips related to those. Real-time examples and assignments, as I mentioned, we are working professionals, the trainers. So we will give you real-time examples when we teach those things. So what are the trainings includes? As I mentioned, we have customized content. So we will teach to corporate people as well. So some of the organizations will give us contracts to uh, train them like college training. So we are going with some college trainings as well. So which will be helpful for their career. So when they're in final year, we are going there and giving them trainings. Training material and backup sessions, whatever we teach, right? Whatever we show in these sessions, we'll be sharing with you. And backup sessions in the sense, we will not take any backup session, but the thing is we will be recording all these sessions and we will be providing this access to you. So in case you miss the session as well, you can go to the video and then you can come back if you have any questions. As I mentioned, online and offline training. So uh, currently VBA, especially uh, which I am taking will be online. Real-time project assistance. Uh, once you are get into any organization after learning this course, you may not be in a position to do complete project like because you need to learn things you need to practice things. so if you practice well you can directly do the projects on your own if you are not doing projects uh, practice well sometimes you need assistance some other people or some other organizations they cannot recruit uh, vba professionals just for a project right so in that case they will come us for project assistance so we will charge them hourly basis based on the estimate so interview questions at the time of explaining the topics as well, we will mention clearly what will be what type of questions might arise in that particular topic. So then, then and there itself, we will explain you those so that uh, you will have that in your mind. Placement assistance, as you already, some of the students might already know this. So you will be added to a WhatsApp group once you register for this particular course. So any postings related to job assistance or placement assistance will be posted in that group. And you can mention the referral as Excelatex and you can forward to those email IDs. So these are the courses we offer. In most of the courses which are here will are live like Excel, Python, Tableau, SQL, and Power BI. So word access in PowerPoint, it is based on the number of audience. As I mentioned, we are certified uh, institute to take MS Office certifications. Why do we need certification? So it, it gives you more value to your uh, resume actually. Say for example, you are, there are four to five people uh, for an interview and none of them are certified. 
and only one of, only you is certified so it gives you some more edge when compared to others certification will not be uh, awarded without having some knowledge right so that gives you more weight so what are the different type of certifications you can see there at the bottom so specialist certification so that for basic learners so even if you know even basics in excel you can write for that expert certification you need to undergo advanced excel uh, like index formulas match formulas and how to create dashboards and also conditional formatting based on formulas all these things you need to learn to go to expert certification for vba specifically we don't have any certification from ms office you, you can go with the ms excel certification that would be sufficient for vba as well so why because we are automating excel in this particular course right so that will give you an edge so this is a sample certification from microsoft so once you write the examination you will get the same uh, soft copy within an hour or so but if you want hard copy it may take some time and why excelitics so as i said uh, we bring best in you because we always ask you or we will post you questions how do you think we can solve this particular kind of scenario so we will post you those questions we will take inputs from you and then we will mention you what we do in real time so that's why we make learning exciting as i also mentioned we are team of certified experts we always discuss real time scenarios and projects we also received great feedback uh, big for our trainings so finally we believe we are best in our sector you can follow us on social media and you can contact our branches as well so though you already know whom to contact so you can see the contact numbers as well that's all from excelitics so let me understand why do you want to learn vba first why because some of them want to learn something else but uh, they might be in this particular course so just give you an introduction and tell me why do, what is your expectation on this course and why do you want to learn vba so that i will mention whether this is the particular course where you will learn that that particular thing which you are expecting or not and then we can go ahead from there please go ahead So yeah, <clears throat> hi everyone. So where I work, so there is a very much importance for VBA, and I also work on few projects. Okay. And you know, uh, wherein I would really need um, to have some training on VBAs. So okay. A lot of dependency. Just wanted to you know skip that dependency. Sure. sure. Anyone else? Hi everyone. Hello. Hi. Yeah, this is Harish. So yeah, Harish. Uh, I am working. I am working as an accounting professional. Uh, okay. My day-to-day -day work is totally dependent on Excel. So I think it will add uh, value to my career. Sure. And it will help me to reduce my workload also. If I am able to automate some things, some other things which I need to do in regular work. Definitely, Harish. If you are doing repetitive kind of work. uh you will automate you can automate that yeah that's what yeah. thank you arish anyone else so i specifically asked this question because some of the people who attended previous courses wanted to automate excel along and then creating those reports and then they want to uh send an emails automatically using this excel and all so if that is the case this is not the intended course and that's why i ask what is your expectation in this particular course we will learn how to automate excel and what other things we will automate is also specifically mentioned in the content course content so that's why we always ask what is your expectation at the primary in the primary uh, class as well so that we can judge whether it is the correct session or not based on which you can continue Okay. My name is Chenna. May I know the fees? Fee and all. Ah, uh, we are not sure about that. Admin team will be ah uh, answering that. You can contact the admin team for the particular course fee, so they will share with you. Okay. Yeah, Chenna. Suppose it is online classes. May I know the timings? The same timing, seven thirty to nine daily, working days, Monday to Friday, and sometimes we will have breaks as well. based on personal uh, commitments 
but it will be 7.30 to 9 a.m. And then it will be for 20 classes almost, 18 to 20 classes for sure. 80 to 90, 20. 18, 18 to 20 classes for sure. One and a half oh. hour into 18 or 20. Okay. Any other questions, guys? The certification provided by the any authorization. Which certification oh. you mean? As I mentioned, Microsoft, uh, if it is Excel, it is from Microsoft. Okay. For VBA, we don't have any certification as such, but you will get participation certification, com course completion certification from Excelitics. Okay. Okay, then I'll go with my introduction then myself funny. So I started my career in 2012. I started with Excel and then I learned VBA in 2013. And from there till now I'm working on Excel and VBA only. So we automate reports, we auto we create dashboards, we automate complete MS Office. So we take data from SharePoint. Uh, we will create reports from SharePoint. So SharePoint is nothing but the database kind of thing where we can store data there other than in Excel. So we'll import data from SharePoint. We will create the reports which we need. We will send emails once we create reports automatically through VBA. Okay. Once we create reports, sometimes we need to present them to the leadership in PowerPoint as well. So we are link all these MS Office applications using VBA. That's what my role. So I, I worked with SNP Capital IQ for four and a half years, and then I worked in Franklin Templeton as well and then continuing my work. Yes, Aga, you have something to ask? So that's my uh, profile. So I started uh, from 2012 and it's 10th year for my expertise. So MS Excel as well as BBA. Yeah, when presently you are working? Yes, I'm working a professional. May I know which company? Uh, though current organization uh, will not be revealed. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then. Let me start the session in that case, if you don't have any other doubts. So how many of you learned Excel already in Excelatics or any other institutes? It may not be in our institute, but in any other institute, how many of you learned Excel, advanced Excel or Excel? Advanced Excel, I learned with Excelatics only. Okay, so what do you, what is an object model in Excel in that case? Anything you can see in Excel is an object. So uh, you can see on the screen, guys, this is the content which we have yeah, discussed. Model. Okay, okay. Yeah, anything, uh, I mean, this is the course content which we'll deal with this particular course, like what is an object model in Excel? What is an Excel macro? How does it do? What is Excel VBA? What are the differences between VB, VBA and VBS? Likewise, you have the course content and uh, admin team will share you if you need the course content. And uh, just for a look, I just mentioned you, I just kept on the screen so that you can go through that. So we will deal with all these things. So how to record a macro. In, in today's demo session, we will see what are the advantages and disadvantages of recording a macro and how to record a macro. And also we will see how to use with statement. Okay, we will see those things. So let me open an Excel blank workbook. Yeah, so what is an object model? So as Harris mentioned, uh, everything you see in Excel is an object. So we should learn object model. If you are clear with object model, then you can write VBA very easy. So tell me, this is a requirement guys. So uh, you have a source file. In the source file, you need to copy information from a source file and you need to uh, paste. Funny, just one 
yeah suggestion there is yeah. some uh, some wind or some disturbance i think something your mic is rubbing against something constantly okay. is it still there yeah when you start speaking there is uh, okay little it's the voice is not uh, coming cleanly okay how is it now no uh, we are yeah. i'm getting voice clearly from funny side okay maybe um voice is clear but i was just suggesting that there is some uh, small vibration coming like when the, when this person suddenly spoke his his voice is clear okay okay so yeah yeah so, no issue no issue yeah, just, yeah thanks so tell me how you do you do it this manually like there is a source file so you need to copy information from this source file so file in the sense excel only so you need to copy data from source file and paste into some other file so how do you do that manually tell me the steps how do you do it when a particular requirement is given to you like this you need to copy some information from source file to destination file how do you do it manually control just select the cell control c and then go to the destination file and control v okay so i didn't mention that source file is open destination file is open we can do we can copy paste two ways so one is the manually copy paste from source file to objective file another way is the uh, we look up or whatever we have idea we can do so we look up copying i said copy not fetching any other details copying you cannot do using we lookup we lookup is used to get any other information using a primary key right you will have a primary key what is a lookup value using that you will use we lookup but i am saying we need to copy some information also i did not mention that the source file is opened and destination file is open i did not mention that right so first step you will open the source file after opening the source file can you copy the information directly what will be the second step no we need, we need to see the required information is stored in which worksheet right select appropriate worksheet then in the worksheet there might be multiple tables so select or identify cell range required range range means single cell or group of cells we call it as a range okay floors range which you need to copy okay open the destination file then once again in which worksheet you need to paste the information then where you need to paste it is not always a1 right sometimes you might to you need to paste on g1 sometimes you need to paste on p1 right S select or range. identify the range where you need to paste then you will paste it these are the steps in word right so if i write code like this what is the hierarchy in object model is first application. application what is application here it's excel, excel. in excel what do we in application workbook. we have workbooks uh, you already learned harry so uh, let let others answer that in okay. workbooks okay. each application excel at a time we can open multiple workbooks so the first hierarchy will be workbooks in excel application we can open multiple workbooks so after application the hierarchy will be workbooks in each workbook we will have multiple worksheets in each worksheet we will have cells ranges charts uh, shapes we have like this so if you remember in each workbook we can open multiple worksheets so by default how many worksheets will be there in a newly created workbook
by default when you create or when you open a new workbook how many sheets will be visible one two or three it's based default. on the settings actually default will be one but you can change the settings to three or four you can change the settings but by default microsoft settings will be one okay so if you observe this is the hierarchy guys so if you remember this particular object model of excel you can write maybe a code easily so you need to identify or you need to understand from which workbook you need to copy the data from which worksheet you need to copy the data and from which range so i will write like this so workbook say for example consider this as source workbook this as destination workbook okay so workbooks of there are, there might be multiple workbooks opened at that particular point but you want to copy information which is there in source workbook so i will say source workbook so in this workbook i want to copy data from which sheet say for example source sheet there will be one name like sheet 1 sheet 2 which we have at the bottom you can see currently the sheet name is sheet 1 where we are working now likewise each sheet have its own name okay then in which range we will copy i want to copy data from a1 to b10 dot copy so if you say this we are clearly mentioning from which workbook and in that workbook from which worksheet and in that worksheet what is the range you need to copy and paste the information so this is complete hierarchy and object model of excel so if you want to paste information say for example i am copying this and giving a space and pasting the same code so let me copy this now where i need to paste i need to paste in destination workbook in destination worksheet say for example i want to paste it in d1 so this is the code to copy paste information in vba is it difficult is it difficult guys so, so we are it, copying it from sheet 1 right so we haven't mentioned the sheet name there you Just should mention that's what i said you should mention the appropriate sheet name, sheet name. so we are not copying from src workbook right we are copying yeah. from book 1 if you observe okay. so if you observe the name should be appropriate so source workbook what is the workbook name then what is the worksheet name sheet. then what is the range in the same way what is the destination workbook name and what is the destination worksheet name say for example you are copying from book 1 and pasting in book 2 so in this case i will say book 1 dot xlsx file and then i will say sheet 1 and then i will say i, I need to paste the information in book 2 dot xlsx and i will say i will paste the information in sheet 4 this is the code which you need to write to copy information say for example i'm copying the same code i am not mentioning in which workbook i need to copy and i need to paste the information so now tell me what do you expect from this code what what will be the output any inputs so what will be the output expected in in such case if i am not mentioning from which workbook i need to copy and in which workbook i need to paste if i am not mentioning complete hierarchy what will happen
we will learn that i will tell you so if you see this particular code which i selected now while copying i selected complete range but while pasting i selected only one cell is it sufficient how do you do it manually when say for example i have information from a1 to a10 i copied it and i want to paste it say for example in v1 v1 to v10 do i need to select v1 to v10 or v1 is sufficient v1 is sufficient right so i will select only v1 and i will paste it so you will get the information there that's what we did in the code as well no need to select complete range for pasting it you can select the first appropriate cell okay so if you are not mentioning coming back to this if you are not mentioning complete hierarchy okay what it will do is it will consider the current workbook so what it will do is it will copy information from current workbook which is active workbook which is book 1 so it will copy information from sheet 1 a1 to b10 and it will paste in sheet 4 if it is available is sheet 4 available in current workbook in active workbook do we have sheet 4 you can see guys we have only sheet 1 we don't have any other sheet so it will throw an error so we will learn all these things in detail but just remember the hierarchy okay now you have seen hierarchy for excel so see this first it will be application then it will be workbook so in each application we might have at least one workbook or multiple workbooks in the same way we have multiple worksheets in each worksheet we have range charts controls and shapes this is object model of excel now someone tell me what will be the object model for ms word and ms powerpoint So this is for Excel. Now tell me for Word and PowerPoint based on Excel. Give it a try, guys. Nothing is wrong. In PowerPoint and Word. PowerPoint we use to only uh, presentation purpose, right? so presentation word we can use the whatever we need to uh i'm asking the, i am asking you the hierarchy say in excel it's workbooks okay in ppt it will be presentations in word what it will be so forget about word tell me what will be the next hierarchy in presentation in excel you have workbooks uh slides yes. page number or it's slides actually slides. Okay. in presentations we have slides, slides yeah. okay so what will be the cells ranges charts or shapes <clears throat> in powerpoint text box it will be shapes everything you do in powerpoint is based on a shape if you want to enter some text there should be a text box right everything you do will be based on a shape so this is the hierarchy so if you want to do something in powerpoint you need to change the hierarchy to presentations slides and shapes so that's why we always mention if you learn excel vba you can try automatically for powerpoint and word as well why because the hierarchy changes that's it the object model changes now coming back to word tell me in word what it will be Documents. Document. Document file. It will be documents first, then pages, then paragraphs or shapes. Sometimes paragraphs and sometimes we deal with shapes as well. So this is the object model of PowerPoint, and this is object model for Word. Okay. So only the objects will change instead of. workbooks if you are using powerpoint you will say presentations of what is a presentation name then slides slides of one slides are two likewise slides you have index 
slide numbers. So you will say slides of one, slides of two. That is a change in general. Okay. Now let's see how to record a macro. Okay. Say for example. So recording a macro is a default function provided by the MS Office itself so that you can record a macro and you can use it. How many of you used recording macro recorder so far? How many of you already used macro recorder? Okay. So let's see how to record a macro using existing functionality. So if you see by default, I have this option enabled as developer. By default, for most of you, it will not be enabled. Why? Because till now you did not use it. So if you see, you will have like this. You won't have the developer tab enabled. So how to enable the developer tab? Go to file, then go to options, then customize ribbon, and you need to select or you need to check this developer tab and click on OK. So these things are clearly mentioned in the PDF, which we will be sharing with you. This PDF we will share with you once we start regular sessions so that in it, it is clearly mentioned how to enable the developer tab. OK, so once a developer tab, once a developer tab is enabled, so you can see all the options. Okay. Saga already used to record macro options. Good. Now, if you see this, how to start recording a macro, you can see an option here called record macro. You can click on this or one more option. If you see here, after ready in the status bar. So this is called status bar in general. After ready, you can see an icon here, right? It says no macros are currently recording. Click to begin recording a new macro. So you can directly click here or you can go to developer tab and you can click on record macro. You can use both the options. So I'm clicking here, record macro. And once you click on that, you need to specify what is the name of it. By default, it will suggest some name. It's up to you. Do you want to change it or not? And then this is mandatory field. Macro name is mandatory. Next, do you want to assign some shortcut? Key? So what is the shortcut key to save? Control S. Right. So if I use yes here, it will not take S directly. Why? Because control S is already having some shortcut. So it will say control shift S. So instead of pressing control S, if you use control shift S, it will trigger this macro. Okay. Then this is optional field shortcut key is not a mandatory field it's an optional field then where do you want to store the macro where do you want to store the recorded code in general we always use this workbook this workbook means the place where we are writing the code or recording the macro this is by default function and this is a mandatory function the last input here is description so why do you want to record this macro? What is the purpose? So this is optional. You can write a description for it. Why do you want to record a macro or else you can leave it blank. Okay. So in general, we always suggest you to write some comments. Why? Because today you might use it and tomorrow you may, you may forward this to someone else and they also need to understand why it is recorded. Right. So just one or two lines of comments there. So I will say test macro recording test macro okay so i'm clicked on okay now once you start you can see start recording change to stop recording now what i will do i will assign 10 value 20 instead of assigning 30 i will assign 40 and realized that it is a mistake and went back and deleted the value added 30 there 40 and 50 okay then I selected all these cells, changing from Calibri to Arial. Bolder the information from 11 size to 12 size. I increased the size, applied yellow background color, italicized it, changed the color to red. Okay, now 
I stopped the recording. Now tell me what are the steps we did? What are the steps we did? Entered the numbers, then corrected the number. Assigned values. Then for those values, what are the things we did? We changed font name. Okay, from Calibri to Arial. Then we changed font size. We bolded that italicized changed background color. Okay. So these are the things we did. Okay. Also, once again, I'm starting recording a macro and I will say this is for applying borders. I want to apply borders as well. So for this, I will say, okay. Okay. I selected the range, applied the borders, stopped recording. Okay. Then I applied borders. So these are the things which we did. Now the code is ready for us. So we can see the code. Let's see how to go to code window. In the developer tab, you can click on Visual Basic. Okay, you can click on Visual Basic or you can see the shortcut there. When I place the cursor there, you can see the shortcut Alt F11. If you're using laptops, sometimes it will be function Alt F11. Okay, if you're using shortcuts. Okay, so this is the code window and I will explain you each and everything in detail. But let's, let's see, first of all, the code. Okay. So let me combine both the codes. So we will have only one thing. Okay. Fine. Now, if you look at the code, so this is the macro one name of it. And this is the comment which you provided there. Okay. And what is the shortcut key we have? And then what did we do? We selected A1 and ascend 10, selected A2 and ascend 20, selected A3 and ascend 40. Likewise, we have, we have done something. So if I maximize this, if you see the line counter here, it says in which line you are currently. Okay. Now I, I went to the last line of the code for applying both the things, including board. So how many lines of code is recorded? How many lines, right? So if you see the code, we needed 102 lines of code. Okay when you record a macro. Now, I will write a code to do the same operation. So if you observe, I am deleting this, okay? So what is the shortcut we used here for creating this macro once again? Control Shift S. So I'm pressing the shortcut, you can see the code, right? So this is the output. Now I will write code manually. So sub manual code, okay, now just observe. So I will explain all these things in detail, guys. We just want to show you what is the disadvantages when you record a macro, okay? So what are we doing now? So range of, we are assigning values first, okay? Equal to 10. So likewise, we will do it for how many cells? Five cells, okay? A to a3, A4, and A5. This will be five, this will be four, this will be three, this will be two. So any difficulty in this? Range of A1 equal to 10, which means I'm assigning 10 value in range of A1. So instead of A, let us use some C. Why? Because we have recorded code available for column A. Let's do it in C column. So this is how we will assign values. 
guys we will learn everything from the scratch once again as this is demo session we will show particular topics and we will explain this everything which we are discussing now will be explained once again in detail okay don't worry about that now once we assign the values if you observe here once we assign the values what did we do we changed font name font size so a range of c1 to c5 okay dot font dot name we are changing the font name to arial initially it is calibri we want to change it to arial then i want to change font size to 12 so currently if you observe if i select this it is calibri and 11 but i want to change it to arial and 12 then what did we do we bold that i want to italicize it so is second thing done did we complete second step changed font name font size we bolded that italicized it the code is written for those so what is the next one we are changing the background color so background in the sense interior color of the cell so color interior dot color equal to which color we are using there background yellow yellow and then we change font color as well so font dot color equal to red and then what is the final thing we applied borders dot borders dot line style equal to excel continuous so i will tell you what that mean okay now if i remove the spaces here so how many lines of code which we have written so far 12 i believe 12 13 including the name and including this so 5 14 14 lines of code and let's see the output so i am pressing f5 which will run the code so observe the output in column a and column c and tell me if there is any difference between those observe the outputs in column a and column c did you find any difference in those outputs right so if you observe when you write when you record a macro it is around 102 lines of code okay but if you write the code manually it is 15 to 16 lines of code so if you, you might ask me i did not see any time difference between the code execution true why because this is not a project you have just written 102 lines of code in a project it will be thousands of lines of code there you will see the lag it will take more time when the number of lines of code is increased okay now let's see the difference why it took so much of lines of code so assigning the values if you see these assigning values we are directly assigning the values we are not selecting the cell first and assigning so if you observe the recorded code initially it selects the cell a1 dot select then it assigns the value once again it selects the cell and assigns the value instead of selecting first and assigning we will directly assign the values in those respective cells next step if you observe this code what is the difference between the upper section and the lower section of the code what is the difference between the selected code the upper section upper half and second half what is the difference looks similar looks similar but the size is different size size is different 
So what happens in a recorded code is, even if you change something in this font group, this is called font group. Even if you change something in the font group, it records completely, which means say for example, font group, if you see, this is the font group. So what is the font name? What is the font style? What is the font size? Do you want to strike through the text? Do you want to superscript the text? Do you want to subscript the text? Likewise, in font group, we have all these options. So if you remember when we are recording the macro, what is the first step we did? We changed what happened. Just a second, guys. Can you see the screen clearly? Yes. Okay. So the first step, first step, what we did is we changed the name only, right? Even though you change name only, it will record everything which is there. So it recorded, you change the name, but it will record everything else in the font group. After that, we bolded the text and then we changed the size. So even though you change only one thing in this, it will record each and everything which is available in that group. So which is duplicate code. We don't need all this. In this step, we changed only font name. We don't need all this. In this step, we changed only size. We don't need all others. Likewise, while you are recording a macro, it will record each and everything. So if you observe this code, from this line of code, okay, from this line of code till this. So how many lines of code? Approximately say 20 lines. All these lines of code is recorded by the macro just to apply borders. Just to apply borders. How many lines of code we have written for applying borders? Only one line there. Only one line. So that is a disadvantage of using recording macros so the code will be lengthier in a project it will affect the time actually okay if why because it will have more steps to do this in this recorded macro we did only simple thing like assigning values and change the background color and all for those things itself it took 100 lines of code imagine in a project how many lines of code it will take okay now with section, I said something like we will see with section as well. So with section will be used when you are using an object multiple times. So if you observe this code or this code, what is the object which is used multiple times? Range C1 to C5. Right, range from C1 to C5 is used in every line, right? So what we will do is, in general, I will keep the code as it is. So what we will do in general is, we will use with statement. With statement will be used when you have repeated things. So if you observe the code, where a program will start with sub and closes with end sub in the same way, with block closes with end with. Now the difference is once you use with block and the repeated object, no need to write that in each and every line. You can remove this. It reduces the code which we need to write multiple times. So in each and every line, no need to write with, with, with I mean, range of C1 to C5, C1 to C5, no need to write that multiple times. So in these cases, we will use, but when you read it, how do you read is C1, range of C1 to C5 dot font name equal to Arial, range of C1 to C5 dot font size equal to 12, likewise. So instead of writing C1 to C5 in each and every line, we use with statement. We will use it only once and it starts with with and closes with and with. In between, you will copy the same code and paste it there and you will remove the repeated object. So now I am commenting this. So if it is commented, it will turn to green, which means it will not be executed during the code. 
okay now once again i am deleting this now if i execute you will see the same output understood why we will use with uh <laughs> didn't follow actually so you could it is the that is so if you see this code in each and every line we are writing range of c1 to c5 range of c1 to c5 in each and every line we are writing c1 to c5 so we use okay. with block to remove such things so what we will do is we will copy this range of c1 with range of c1 to c5 it starts with with and closes with end with and in between you will write respect remaining code dot font dot name equal to area dot font dot size equal to total so what will happen is we will we will not write this code in every line that's what it do okay is it like a for loop it's syntax actually not a formula it's a syntax oh is is it like a loop is it is it like it's a not a loop, loop? it's not a loop but the thing is instead of it reduces or uh, it it reduces the manual errors instead of writing you say for example in line when you have written c1 to c5 unfortunately instead of assigning c1 to c5 in the next line you might type c11 instead of one one might be pressed multiple times unfortunately so instead yeah. of doing that what we will do is we will use this block so that you will write the object only once not in every line okay got it got it so it will reduce that for you yeah got it so if you observe this font is also repeated multiple times right dot font now what we can do is we can once again use with dot font why because dot font is repeated multiple times until this particular section only below to that dot font is not available so you can use this like this as well and now i will remove dot font likewise you can customize the code based on the thing so if you observe once again i am removing this executing the code you can see the same output likewise you can use with multiple times one inside the other so if you see we are writing dot font as well multiple times so I, once again i used with block dot font okay any doubts in this as i mentioned we will discuss in detail once again but let me know whether it is easy to understand or difficult to understand so that we can we will have some knowledge on that assigning the values changing the font name size how does it appear to you yeah that uh, line style you said you will mention that we will just, we will we will explain as i mentioned right so when you go into detail sessions we will learn those things in detail okay so these things we have to remember is it? that bb red b like those special words which one bb red yellow BB. those are colors right the default colors if you want to change some color no need to remember as well say for example how many options you have to change colors in excel directly forget about vba how many options do you have to change colors in excel say for example for this section i want to change background color what are the options you have yeah all the colors two of these six colors perhaps it's not like that these are default colors which you are talking about is default colors in the same way in vba as well we have default vb red vb yellow vb green no need to remember those okay. and other than standard colors we can customize colors as well in excel right we can go to standard or you can go to custom and you can mention rgb oh. rgb means red green and blue how much of this you need to have say for example the minimum value of rgb is 0 and maximum is 255 you cannot increase beyond 255 say for example i am saying 260 so you can see the range should be 0 and 255 only right you can select some color and you can click on okay based on which uh, the color will change so if you say for example i am going to this i am selecting some color and you can see the rgb is getting changed so you can use this concept as well in vba instead of remembering that you can say dot color equal to rgb 
of what is how much of red, how much of green, and how much of blue. As I mentioned, zero to two fifty five is the range. No need to remember anything by default. This is a, this is the option which we have as well, like in Excel. Understood? Yeah. Any other doubts, guys? Money, I think uh, <clears throat> we have to remember these things like we have to use a dot before name and those inverted commas, then brackets that you are using to yes. record, write a macro. So we have to remember these things, right? On practice, you will get that. Yes, there will be a syntax for everything, right? Okay. So yeah. those things should be uh, on practice, you will get that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you observe the difference between font dot name and font dot size, the difference there is font dot name. You are providing text, so we are providing that in double quotes. Whereas size is a number. Number you can directly assign. Okay. Twelve is a numeric field, so you can directly assign that. No need to provide it in double quotes. Okay. Likewise, we will use it. Any other doubts, guys? This is how we go. And if you want to see the content of the course. Uh, Ping the admin team, they will send you the link where you can see the content. What are the things we will deal in this particular course? And uh, once you are good to go, once you are done, once you understood this, or once you are good with our teaching, you can go ahead and register for the session and we will continue the sessions. So it is based on the number of people registered for the course. And then we'll go ahead from that. Okay. So when is the batch starting from tomorrow? Uh, probably from Monday, I will be available from Monday. So in general, we'll give some time for the students to decide themselves whether they want to continue or not. Right. So we will give, generally we will take the demo on Thursday or Friday and we will give those three days time like Saturday and Sunday as well. And then we'll start on Monday, but uh, I will not be available from tomorrow to Friday. So we thought of doing it today itself. So you will have this time to decide whether you want to continue with the course or not, and then you can register for them and we will start that from Monday. Sure. Okay. Class is going regularly or weekly toys or toys? No, no, no. It will be Monday to Friday. Most probably it will be five days a week. Sometimes if there are any personal commitments for me, I will mention that prior day itself so that we will not have the session on the next day. But in general, it will be five days a day, five days a week. Sorry. How many days, sir? As I said, right, 18 to 20 days. 18 to 20 oh, days. Okay. Sometimes it might extend as well, like two to three days, a maximum of 22 or 23. That's it. And Same timing, 7 30 to 9. So, will we get any recording? Yeah, you will get this recording. So what we will do is we will record the session and we will upload after three hours or so into the website, YouTube, and we will provide you the link for the registered candidates. Only they can access the video. Okay. Okay, and regarding the codes and all, like, so let's go to the new to this, you're not able to remember the next thing. your voice is not clear. It's a little bit slower and louder. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so in case, I mean, as you said, like we have to remember this dot with, uh, sorry, with uh, range and everything, no? Yes. So we are not able to remember all those things. Will we, will we be getting any PDF help kind of thing? As I mentioned, uh, whatever we show in the session, everything will be shared with you. The quotes, the PDFs, everything which we show in the session will be available for you, will be shared with you. Uh, so, can we uh, directly write a VT macro without recording? Yeah, that's what I did, right? If you, if you see this manual code, which I have written, I wrote it manually without recording it. Yeah. We will learn all those things in the session. Yeah. So, recording a macro, if you ask me, you will write all the code without recording it? I will say no. We have an inbuilt feature. What we will do is we will record the macro. 
and we will customize as per our requirement okay. even after all these years of experience sometimes it will take time to record the code i mean time to write the code so what we will do is we will record it and then we will remove all the unnecessary parts in the recorded macro so to remove those unnecessary things you need to learn vba then only you will uh, you will know what is necessary and what is not necessary so in the recorded code if you observe there is with and end with all the place so you don't know what is with and end with and you delete it end with the code will not run it says something is missing so if i try to execute this code you can see expected end with it will not execute the code okay to remove those things you need to run vba clear Any other doubts, guys? No. no. Okay, guys. So think of it and then connect with admin team to register for the course if you want to continue. And we will have the sessions from Monday. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, everyone. Thanks right. for attending the demo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for.